Good evening and welcome to Cliffy Land's Global, Global Cooking Challenge. Uh, tonight is night two of cooking the food of Suriname. Uh, tonight we are making fried plantains with a spicy peanut sauce and a dal lentil stew. Uh, so uh, again, for the uninitiated, uh, Suriname is located in South America, right there. It is located between Guyana, French Guinea, and Brazil on the uh, Atlantic coast. And uh, we'll get going here. Hello, goodness, uh, that's a quick hello. Uh, hey, Niels, how you doing? And Arsenal Lover, thank you for liking the restream. Thank you all. Hey, Kenneth, see you there? So let's uh, flip. Whoopsie doo. There we go. So, which side am I on? So, that's what we're doing today. Oddly enough, we're doing uh, for the first time on here, and only the second time since I started. Hey, and for uh, happy, happy to you. Thanks for the restream. Uh, for the only the second time, uh, and the first time on here, uh, we will be doing a vegetarian dinner. I'm sure it's really great. Last time I did one was really good too. It's not generally my thing, so. Uh, so, uh, we'll get into the details of this in case you missed it. This again is night two of cooking the food of Suriname. Suriname, a uh, former Dutch colony uh, in South America. Uh, so, oddly enough, it is one of the few countries that while part of South America is not part of Latin America. And as such, I'm trying to get the stand to work here without wobbling too much. Um, uh, they speak Dutch, they speak a, a sort of a Creole language also. And the po population, again, is a mixture of uh, primarily Hindustani people uh, that uh, the Dutch brought over uh, as workers from uh, the north of India, and uh, Javanese, people from Java and Indonesia that the Dutch brought over also. Uh, so the plurality of people are Hindu. Uh, so that's gonna, if you're wondering why there's all this, you know, Indian type food that we're gonna be doing here, that's why. And uh, also Indonesian stuff. There is a small native population. Uh, yes, plantains. Well, like fried bana like bananas, but uh, plantain is, a, is kind of a different uh, beast itself. It's larger. Um, uh, you'll see in a moment. We'll get into details of the plantains later. Uh, but in any case, so you have a small indigenous population, which is getting larger uh, as people are coming over from, from Brazil um, and changing the population base, because only like 500,000 people live there. It's about the size of Georgia, if you're U.S. or U.S.-centric. Um, there's a Creole population, and this is where this music is, uh, Creole music from uh, Suriname. And uh, there's small American and Chinese populations also. So. Uh, let's get going. We're going to start first on the lentil stew since uh, that requires uh, certain bits of uh, waiting. So let's get cracking, uh, crack a lacking on that. This, I'm hoping with the plantain and one of our ingredients here, that uh, my timing is okay vis a vis um, ripe, level of ripeness. We're just gonna have to hope. This is not the biggest onion in the world, but it shall have to do. Hello, Derek, how you doing? But, um, yeah, as you'll see about plantains, if you are not familiar, it's kind of funny, because being Puerto Rican, I mean, we lived on plantains, you know, every day of the week. So, it's, uh, it's just, you know, one's, one's uh, perspective, I guess. Uh, plantains um, are, are sort of like bananas. Uh, they grow on trees that look like bananas. Uh, they look like big bananas. Um, but unlike just your average banana, um, these are uh, eaten at different levels of ripeness and cooked in different ways. Um, and generally not eaten raw. You would not want to eat a raw plantain. Um, a plantain, uh, when it is uh, green, you can cook it one way. Uh, generally fried is uh, what people do or they'll uh, boil or fry it and mash it and do stuff with it like we Puerto Ricans make um, a uh, a dish mofongo which is uh, so sort of like mashed up plantains with stuff in it 
which uh, growing up I didn't like it, but um, more recently I've had it in ways that's been really good. Uh, when it is ripe, you can have it fried in different ways, but when it's overripe, like like black, like you want to throw it out, like this can't possibly be good. This is ready for the garbage. That is when it is really, really sweet. And then it's sort of like candy. And um, you can bake it or you can fry it and it's very tasty. You can do a million things with plantains. Hello, Miss Jonesy, how are you doing? So we are uh, getting our onions ready for our lentil stew, uh, which will be served with a side of Beano, I'm sure. Um, when, uh, if you're wondering, the last time we did a vegetarian dinner, and this wasn't vegetarian by design, it was vegetarian by default, uh, because the other dish that I'm doing on Tuesday is very involved. Uh, and is going to, uh, phew, I'm already stressing over that one. Um, uh, the other option, uh, aside from what we did on, hey, Topless Baker, how you doing? Eee, good seeing you. I'm keeping my shirt on, though. Um, the, uh, other, the other, other dish, which I, I won't be doing, um, is, I don't know the exact word for it. Uh, but it's basically a chicken pot pie, a humongous chicken pot pie that involves making, you could get pastry dough or you can make your own dough and in essence, make a chicken pot pie. Um, it sounds really delicious, but it looks like it serves like 80 million people and it would take all day. So for those two reasons, I decided against doing that one. The one I'm doing on Tuesday is involved enough. Me too, too. My good man. How's, how's baking in the UK going? Ugh. Things, I just have not really, I feel bad I haven't been able really to watch people's streams for the most part. I've been rather bad about that lately. There's been so much going on. This time of year just really does it, well, does it to everybody, but does it to me. Um, so, uh, but the other dish that we did uh, the, in this whole history of the challenge that was vegetarian, uh, again, by default, not by design, was also a lentil-based uh, stew, which we did for Egypt, which is a lot like what we did last week for Sudan, since those two are neighbors. And that was a... Ah, um, uh, why am I blanking? I forgot the name. I'm really sorry. I just totally blanked on the name. Um, but it's, a, it's, like the, the, it's sort of like the Egyptian national dish, uh, which is sort of a lentil stew. Uh, with pasta, I think. Way back in Egypt, in the letter E. Um, so it's been a while. Uh, but that's the last time. We did something strictly vegetarian. So, trying again. Between two years. Uh, this is going to, this lentil stew is also going to involve mango. And it is not what you'd call mango season here in Florida right now. But I got mango anyway. So I don't know where it came from. I got it at the produce stand. I don't know where they got it from. Um, so uh, that is going to go be served with a roti. We made the roti on Friday. On Friday we made roti, fresh roti, um, uh, plain, not uh, stuffed or anything like you would find. There's, uh, as I mentioned before, there's about, if you do a search for it, there's about 20 different types of roti. Um, roti generally being um, the flatbread, the fried flat flatbread, but uh, you can do it different ways. You can make it fluffier with lots of different layers, and then you can stuff it with different things, uh, but this is just plain. We did ro made roti for Sri Lanka a couple weeks ago. Their version has coconut in it. Uh, this one does not. We made it. I made enough for three nights, so uh, we'll be heating up the leftovers on the roti, which actually... Being something quite basic as, uh, you know, flour, water, and baking soda, baking powder, sorry. Um, it was actually very tasty. I had, I had seconds. Uh, so the lentil stew is being served with the roti. And uh, what else did we do on Friday? We made the uh, mixed vegetable salad, which is very good. Uh, hey Cliff, I made the Russian beef stroganoff last night. You did? Oh wow, how'd it go? Did you make the fries? The fries is really what makes it special. Oh, tell me how it went, Anne-Marie. I'm very excited to hear. 
That was uh, the beef stroganoff I made. Oh, good. Oh, good, 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 good. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. The beef stroganoff I made, which, as I mentioned before, you know, you say beef stroganoff, and it's like, really? That's, like, the, you know, that's the basis of, of TV dinners and cafeteria food throughout the 60s and 70s in the U.S. But when you, the recipe I did was original Russian incredible. One of my favorite dishes I've made so far. So, really happy to hear that. And Marie. So, we've got our onion down. So, uh, let's get to our garlic. Uh, let me clear this out. I'll be right back. Turn on some lights here. Alrighty, so get our garlic together. When I have my contacts in, I can't see from distance at all. So I, I, I'd love to tell you what exactly it is that we're hearing. So uh, we're looking for three cloves of garlic here. Incidentally, Last night I was playing around on the Periscope app on um, on the Apple TV. Interesting, odd, odd and interesting. I mean, you can't comment when you're on the Apple TV. You have to be using your mobile app for that, and you can't look by topic. You can only go like by geography or just kind of see what's most popular. But then it's like gl trending globally and like being viewed by two people, which strikes me as additionally odd. So, uh, anyway, well, I'm ashamed to say I used egg noodles and no potato, never had potatoes, but I'm definitely making them again with fried potatoes. Hey, Ken, I thank you for the restream. Um, yes, well, get, do it again with the, uh, again with the deep fried potatoes. The um, the potato, the, the french fries, the pommes frites that, on which the uh, beef stroganoff, Russian beef stroganoff is served, is, and that and the sauce are the two most incredible things about it. Uh, but the pommes frites, if you do, if you have the time and energy to do the pommes frites, the french fries, the, uh, the way, the, the exact way that the method calls for, and I finally mastered the whole matchstick thing, uh, which I didn't think I could, um, that, it was so good. Oh my god, it was so good. In fact, I need to find an excuse to, to have people over again to make that. It was that good. Um, although, uh, I mentioned the uh, Spanish paella I made to, uh, the family, and the family people are just all, uh, you know, not adventurous, so... They're like, oh, Spain, paella, yeah, 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 make paella for everyone. Uh, Kenneth says, the heart bubbles on Periscope are irritating. Oh, yeah, I love your cooking blog. Thank you, Anne-Marie, thank you very much. I very much appreciate that. So we're going to mince these garlic cloves here. Yes, by the way, um, everything, if you're wondering what the hell is going on here, this is uh, my global cooking challenge. Uh, started in 2012, uh, in September. Uh, after not cooking for 30 years and never learning to cook, uh, I decided to get off my butt and do, uh, to cook a dish. I did a dish from Afghanistan, which came out quite well, which led to me realizing, hey, look, I have OCD, I love geography, I love lists, I need to learn to cook. So I decided I would cook a dish or dishes from uh, a UN member state in alphabetical order one country a week. Uh, and then I figured at the end of 193 weeks, I would uh, learn to cook. So now it is week number 165. We're on Suriname. And uh, that's 165 of 193. This is the last country, though not the last night, for 2015 here. Uh, and um, everything is at cliffyland.com. Just uh, go follow on... Uh, uh, Facebook, just find Cliffy Land, the Global Cooking Challenge, or on Twitter at Cliffy Land, or on Instagram, or on Pinterest, or if you like, on YouTube. We're now on YouTube, so you might be watching this on YouTube right now. 
but uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, that would be really cool and make me very happy. Um, but everything is up there and you can see uh, how everything progressed from me not knowing how to boil water to me being live on Meerkat and uh, doing everything for the world. Uh, how did you eat Barrow? Sorry, how did you eat before then? Oh, um, yeah, uh, I didn't cook. The husband um, would prepare food. Uh, there's a, you're in, you're in the UK. Um, there's um, a, a market called Trader Joe's, which is in limited parts of the US and growing, which is a small supermarket that they have uh, hand-picked uh, specialty foods, a lot of prepared stuff, but it's super tasty and kind of fresh and good and we'd have a lot of that and a lot of takeout and we'd eat out a ton. Um, uh, I wouldn't set foot in the kitchen, I wouldn't set foot in a grocery store. There's long stories behind each of those, but you know, I don't want to to repeat the stories too often so as not to bore regulars. Uh, but yes, that's, uh, I used to joke that, uh, if I was single, that, uh, I would be found dead of starvation with my fingers just inches away from the phone of the Domino's pizza number. Uh, because I couldn't cook. It was tragic. Um, when I was in college, which is, you know, when I almost killed myself accidentally, food poisoning, which is what made me stay out of the kitchen for 30 years because I never learned to cook. Um, but back then a friend came to pick me up one time. We we're going out to dinner and he says, what are you doing? I says, I'm eating dinner. He says, what are you eating? He says, it's all I had. He says, you're making dinner out of rice and toast? And I go, it's all I had. <laughs> so that was the way I used to eat. I was also 30 pounds heavier. So the, uh, the running started in 2010 and the cooking started in 2012. So today for kicks, to give the husband time to take care of some stuff in the house, I decided to go out and I ran a whole 13.25 miles. Yay me! Uh, hey Bad Beef, how you doing? Have you used banana, banana ketchup? No, I can't say that I have. Banana ketchup, that sounds strangely interesting. You'll have to tell me more about that. Uh, okay, here's the next trick. Number one, from what I gather about this mango that I'm about to use, one thing that I read about this in one of the versions of the recipes, it said, mango best used if underripe. You know what? I grew up in Florida. I grew up with mango trees in, the, in everyone's yard. I could not tell you from looking at it whether a mango is ripe or not. It's a mango. I know there's 80 million types of mangoes. There's a place you can go here in Florida and you can see, uh, we went to um, sort of like a display, a festival of sorts, and they're showing off something like you know 40 different varieties of mango and other fruits. which is crazy. 13 miles, how long did that take? Uh, about two hours and 10 minutes or so, something like that. Uh, two hours, 20 minutes maybe. Uh, I'm getting a glass. Uh, but thankfully, this is the one day the weather came down. You ran 13 miles, did you rob a bank? <laughs> No, no, um, A, I enjoy it, and B, it's just the first glorious day that the temperature is down in the 70s. It was supposed to be down in the 60s. I would have been happier in the 60s, but, uh, in the 70s, we'll do. I'm trying to remember how to peel mango. People say some types of papaya smell musty moldy. Yeah, papaya is, um, there's green papaya and there's ripe papaya and you can use them differently even though i think they're the same beast except one's just ripe 
uh, we've used each, uh, but they look and they taste very different. But they do, papaya does have a unique flavor, which um, I can see how some people don't like it. Um, I would call it an acquired taste. I'm trying to score this. No, I'm treating it like an avocado. I shouldn't treat it like an avocado. Uh, okay. I googled this before, last time I dealt with a mango, and now I've totally forgotten. I want to get close to the seed, to the, and I'm, and apparently I hit the seed square on, which is wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay, let's try that again. Mango, oh mango, mango, and I miss you. Like the deserts miss the rain. Mango. Why am I not doing this right? Okay, there's the top of the seed. I swear, last time I actually Googled to remember how to peel a mango. See, one way is to like, you know, peel it, but I want it to do the other way. But I don't think that's gonna work. Oopsie doopsie. Okay. We're gonna have to dice it anyway. Thankfully, it did say underripe is better than overripe, so. I'm trying to get around that seed. Also, God, I grew up with mangoes in the yard all the time, but it's like I didn't do a lot of peeling mangoes myself, as you can tell. This is patently obvious at this point. Okay, you're done. Um, this is, I just don't want to waste that much of the mango. Um, you, you know, there's a reason I have the glass sitting out here. Uh, last time you saw me try this, it was a bit of a disaster. The mango is also kind of overripe, but then it works the next time, so we'll see if it works this time. Mango juice is so good. Hey, Reigns fan, how you doing? Good seeing you. Uh, uh, Cheyenne, have you ever been down to that, um... You're down by there, by the, 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 the Redlands, by the farms. Have you been out to that, uh... I forget what, the, the tropical fruit place of there, where they have the million and one mangoes. Tomato ketchup is used in Philippine cooking. Huh. I did not come across that cooking in the Philippines. I will have to check that out. I mean, can one make one's own tomato ketchup? Uh, I mean, but... Tomato, tomato ketchup. You said tomato ketchup. Before you were talking about a different kind of ketchup. I know ketchup ketchup was originally a Chinese thing. Um, which a lot of people don't know, but you surely do. Uh, what's the name of that fruit and spice park, I think, in, in the Redlands? Down, down, down where Cheyenne is there. We we'd spent a day down there, Mother's Day, a couple years ago. It was really nice, but the mosquitoes were out the wazoo. We were eaten alive. Okay, so... Uh, yes, I don't live far from there. We drove by there, but never got fruits from there. You should check it out. It is very cool. Okay, here's the deal. So, if this is ripe, Del Monte is the brand. Yes, I've heard of Del Monte. Okay, here's the deal. Glass. Mango. Mango meat glass. Glass, this is mango. You are going to peel my mango for me. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, my dickens. Ta da! See? Mango. Big Kike! Thank you for the like. So, this is a handy dandy way to peel mangoes when it works. 
One time before it didn't work, but also the mango was very, very ripe. This is less ripe, so it's uh, providing a little more resistance. Maybe a little too much. But some of the local chefs, celebrity chefs and stuff, one that I follow, he's very, you know, I mean, as, as a really good chef should be, is very much into, you know, fresh fruit, fresh food in season, local farm to table, yada, yada. Um, and he, like, goes on about not, you know, having mango out of season and stuff. But the problem is I don't know which is which. Uh, wasn't ketchup green at first or something other than tomato? Maybe. Um... Kenneth would probably know the answer to that question. Um, uh, but all I know is that yes, it was Chinese. Uh, okay, so we're dicing up some mango. I should have diced it properly first, but it'll be okay. Again, this says uh, for this mango, for this recipe, it says the uh, more underripe, the better. Which is handy because uh, I managed to get one that way. In so far as the plantain, the opposite is true. Uh, the plantain part of tonight's dinner, uh, the recipe would prefer it to be black, to be overripe uh, plantain. So it'll be really nice and sweet. Uh, also very soft and hard to deal with. Uh, the plant, but at the at the stores, I can't find uh, plantains um, that are ripe. They tend to be green or yellow and ripe. Maybe you know I got one yellow and ripe with a couple black spots. You know they they won't sell. Like, you can't find a black one. It would look like they're selling rotten fruit, uh, which is probably why. But I would imagine Latin markets they would. But I guess the premise is no, you just buy it and wait till it gets black and then deal with it. But uh, it's not meant to buy and cook the same day, I guess. So there's that. Uh, landing point, thank you for the restream. Kenneth, there are numerous other condiments that have different colors. Yes, there are. Yes, indeedy. I'm fighting the urge to eat this mango right now. I'm really fighting the urge to eat this mango right now. I will not have a piece of this mango right now. I will not let myself as much as I want to. Okay. Uh, if you were straight and not married, and I was a lot younger, I could see us getting together, but wow, we have a, we have a lot of arguments. <laughs> wow. That is probably for the best, ain't it? Uh, okay. So, you like the drama, right? So we got our diced mango right here. You could buy it ripe and then overripe it by using it in a brown bag. Yes, I have it in a plastic bag right now. Um, I think was it you put on something if you put a something else like an apple in with the bag it makes it ripen faster there's something that gives off a certain gas uh, um, I tried that once before ages ago but I really didn't have the, the patience for it this time uh, blah, blah, blah. you cannot make Filipino spaghetti without banana ketchup good to know okay so I'm gonna clean this off I'll be right back Which is interesting, at least not in the cutting aspects. At least for this dish, I'm like I'm doing this one first uh, because uh, the time that it takes to do other stuff. So I'm just going to set out uh, some of the other things I'm going to need here, uh, just to make things quicker when I go to drop things in and take pictures, etc., etc. Starting with butter. This one is made with butter. Now, 
I mean, I know I could use ghee. That kind of would make more sense. Yes, the fruit gives off some methane gas. I hope that helps it ripe. Yes. Awesome stream. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Um, yeah, there's a, but there's the same thing that they, that makes the gas that they pump into apples to make them ripen faster when they pick them green and stuff is, there's something, there's something natural. Uh, I think it's an apple. I'm getting everything very confused. Um, I, I could look it up, but what am I doing right now? I'm looking for butter. Uh, so I need four tablespoons of butter. That's two. That's four. Like I said, I could use ghee, which would be more... Thank you, Arsenal Lover. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Uh, that would be more Indian. Uh, but this recipe didn't say to use ghee. And I saw I'll save my ghee for later. Banana ketchup was developed during World War II and tomatoes disappeared. Interesting. Banana ketchup. Banana. -na. Banana. -na. Did everyone go see Star Wars? We went. We went yesterday. Very good. No spoilers. Very good. It was the movie needed to be. Which is good. I'm not a big Star Wars geek, but I had to go see it. So we got our two. Uh, four uh, tablespoons of butter. Uh, then we're going to get out... Now this one's odd. Because the recipe had two cumin seeds, but it had it in two different places. Uh, two teaspoons of cumin seeds. So, I hope I'm not messing something up. Cumin. Comino en grano. A mood for french fries, all this ketchup talk. Ah, make the french fries. Go to my post at goatcliffyland.com. You can find it under the link from the Russian post or from the post from Belgium. The palm frites, the steps, the ways to make the french fries. Takes time, but if you do it that way, incredibly good. You'll die. I've never seen Star Wars. Well, you're missing out. Um, uh, I'm not a sci-fi person. I'm not a franchise person. I'm not a... A big, you know, action movie blockbuster person, but Star Wars is the one thing I have to see all of them. And I'm really glad I did. Hello, Clifton, to you too. Okay, so cumin, or uh, two tablespoons, that's a lot of cumin seeds. Wowzer, wowzer, wowzer. I really hope that's right. But let me double check. Come back, maybe. I'm gonna double check. It probably is. But, uh... Uh... Just to be on the safe side. The soundtrack is disappointing. I am... Uh, about this soundtrack? Yeah, this is uh, the, the Creole music of Suriname. We ran through a whole lot of other Suriname music on Friday. One tablespoon. Oh, God, two? Are you serious? No, two teaspoons, damn it. Good thing I double checked. Because that seemed ridiculous. That seemed ridiculous. I'm glad I double checked. Okay. Let's try that again with the right thing. Yeah, that seemed like way too much. Uh, I heard that was false. Oh, I didn't know that the spoiler about her. Daniel Craig is a stormtrooper. Yes. Yes, you hear his voice, you don't see him. So if you see the movie, just listen for Daniel Craig's voice and you go, oh my god, that was him? That's not a spoiler. One. I kind of missed a little bit there. No, 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 the Star Wars movie. Oh, okay. Um, I, maybe? I mean, you, you recognize the original score, the, the new stuff. It didn't really jump out at me, so maybe... Disappointing in that front? It is uh, eligible for the Oscar, though. So we'll see. 
Uh, okay, so here's the deal with this. Is there really nothing else? There's got to be something else. Uh, oh yes, um, lentils. The lentils are our main thing here. Uh, here's the thing, dal, D-A-H-L, dal, is a common, is a word you'll find in uh, any kind of Indian, Hindustani um, food. And there's a million different types of legumes, uh, split peas and everything out the wazoo. It's dizzying. I can't make heads or tails out of it. Problem is that I bought one bag about that big. I could dig it out of the back. Urad doll for India, like that big. And then I bought another doll, which is another type of doll, and another bag that big, and that's sitting in there for a different dish. And neither of these are the doll that I needed. Um, this was just your red lentils. So, luckily this is easier to find. And Tejas Rojas, red lentils, from Goya. Uh, the only, this, if I, the only Star Wars I remember was the Ewok Adventures. I know, really not Star Wars. Yeah, really not. Some people would say super, super, super not. Uh, Diana, thank you for the like and the restream. Uh, yes, I am in the minority of anyone who's ever seen Star Wars. Of, a. Uh, I actually really like the Ewoks. I don't care what anyone says. I like the Ewoks, I think they're cute. And I was not seven years old when it came out. Hello, Diana. Handy Santa to you too. So, we're looking for one cup of the lentils. I don't need to, I know it's gonna seem stupid, but I need to put this in the fridge. Countries. Oh, um, um, holy shiitake, there will be a huge celebration when your cooking journey in the country finishes. Yeah, that's, um, everyone keeps talking about that. Uh, Zimbabwe, uh, the, the when this finishes, since you brought it up, is, uh, the date sort of change when it finishes because of this very week in Suriname. You see, uh, historically, you've taken two weeks off um, at the holidays because of, you know, I always do Tuesdays. Tuesdays is always my last day. And, uh, oh, could you find me a paper clip? Okay. Um, the, uh, Tuesdays, so that meant that I'd always take two weeks off at the holidays, but because the way the holidays fall this time, um, I could do this week. So this is the first week, first year I've done 51 weeks of the year. Star Wars Trivia, what was the original name of Return of the Jedi? Revenge of the Jedi. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Uh, I, 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 I did not know. Uh, I purchased red boat fish sauce from Vietnam, the best in the world. Good to know. Um, hey, Kathy, how you doing? Uh, was it called Ewok Adventures? <laughs> Traveling with teddy bears. Uh, Okay, so we've got our red lentils here. Doo -doo -doo. Pepper clip on here. Get our bean ready. Yes, I'm gonna stick that in the freezer. Make sure no critters crawled in there. Um, okay, so we're getting out some turmeric. As uh, if you read my whole thing on uh, Medium, that the uh, meerkat people were so nice to do a little interview with me. Um, I live, I live for turmeric. Uh, it, uh, I didn't know what it was before, but I live for it now. Turmeric is a spice commonly used in Indian food. Um, my vegan friends live for turmeric also, um, which uh, it stands to reason why the turmeric here, which is uh, gonna be, I, I even bought an extra one because I use so much now. Uh, one teaspoon of turmeric coming right up. It gives everything a really great flavor and a great color. Uh, so we're looking for... Lydia, how you doing, my good woman? Hey there, hi there, ho there. We are cooking the food of Suriname with some turmeric. It's a very Indu uh, Indian inspired uh, because the uh, plurality of people in Suriname that is the largest percentage of people, are uh, Hindustani, and the food reflects that. There is, uh, the plantains we're doing sort of reflect a little bit of the 
um, native population since the plantains grow there, and with the peanut sauce, which has an Indonesian uh, flavor, which reflects the Javanese population of Suriname. So they're trying to cover the different uh, different bases there. So uh, now we're getting two teaspoons of curry powder. Uh, the curry powder that's used. I'm just using your, you know, the basic curry powder. Uh, if I can find it. Uh, that's not curry powder. Come on, here we go. Yeah, uh, the basic curry powder that I found, <laughs> Spice Island. Um, Anthony Gilmore, gee, good, good day to you too, sir. Good evening, good night, good evening, good, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Um, but uh, you can make your own curry powder. They specifically, Conmerica is good for arthritis. Good to know. Um, but uh, there's different types of curry powder. And uh, this one is like kind of generic. The Badia had a big one, which is Jamaican style, which would make sense to be sold in this market um, since a large number of people having curry here would be looking for a Jamaican type thing. Not necessarily in this neighborhood, but um, two teaspoons. So, uh, there, Cliffy is putting me to shame the cooking you do. I went to school to cook and I haven't cooked all my sense near death one year ago. Oh dear. Since my near death, oh dear, sorry to hear about that near death experience. That's not good, but uh, I appreciate the compliment and I get, you know, get yourself uh, back in the game if, if you can. Uh, but, uh, that you can, uh, was it, uh, live vicariously if, 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 you, if you care to do so. I mean, heck, for what, five, six years before I started the cooking thing, I was just living vicariously by watching Top Chef. It's the only cooking show. I, I mean, I'm sort of like allergic to cooking shows, but Top Chef I watched and I couldn't, I mean, I'm a junkie with Top Chef, so. This is a curry, so I gotta notice the difference. Turmeric is kind of a darker orange and the curry powder is kind of a lighter yellowish. So I'll need, I'll need to know that in moments. Okay, so we're ready to start heating this sucker up. This uh, entire operation cooks in about an hour it seems. So I think we're doing well on time. Once. Uh, so, let's get our butter over here. Now I'm going to be using a saucepan for this sucker. And for the other one, well, you'll have to give me guidance on that. We'll, we'll be discussing that later. But for now, we have our uh, saucepan. Now here's the deal. One thing that I've learned is that with butter, you want to start with a cold pan because that way that keeps the butter from instantly browning. So it slowly melts the butter and then you can add in the uh, garlic and onions, which we will be doing. Toot sweet. Uh, and each of these steps is going to take a certain amount of time so while that happens, then we're gonna start prepping the other dish uh, in this in-between time. Hopefully I won't screw that up too badly. Ah, still dehydrated from the run. Ah, that was nice. The weather was finally decent. Then it's gonna go back up to being in the 80s. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Christmas in Florida. Uh, oh, but before we get, uh, I'm gonna ask you advice. The plantain recipe, the plantains are to be sort of battered and deep fried. I'm not using the deep fryer. However, I did uh, recently have the husband go out and buy, and I didn't use it at the time, but I'm gonna use it now, a deep fry thermometer. Because I had earlier tried to use a regular thermometer for deep frying to, to oil, and I destroyed the thermometer. 
So now I know not to do that. However, since with the plantains, with the deep frying, I'm only frying one plantain as opposed to like two or three, because, you know, we don't want to serve that many people. The, uh, I don't want to like get two inches of oil in a big old skillet because that's gonna be a whole lot more oil. And there's only one um, plantain. So I'm wondering, would it be wrong to do the two inches of oil in this little pot? That way I'll use less oil. Or would that be totally wrong? You tell me. Oh, we wait for our butter to, to melt. So uh, I have this on a low medium because I'm always paranoid about the oil. Yes, I know you could add olive oil and it wouldn't da da da. This isn't calling for that, so I'm gonna try to do it, you know, straight up. Uh, I know, so I know it's not gonna sizzle. But I can take pictures anyway. Which I tend to forget. Give it up. Up from nap, what's cooking? Hey Yolanda. Uh, okay, right now we're making a dal lentil stew, which is gonna be served with roti, which we made on Friday, the uh, flatbread, so we have leftovers of that to go with this. This is actually a vegetarian dinner for the first time since Egypt, so do the math. Um, and also be served with fried plantains with a spicy peanut sauce. The spicy peanut sauce is the exact same sauce that we made on Friday, except for uh, Friday, I forgot to add the lime juice. Doesn't matter as long as it's at a temperature. Thank you, Kenneth, you are my man. You are the man. Say so, you no, know, if I wait, you know, if I let the 30 second lag go by, I'll be okay. Okay, so butter, onions. Okay, it's starting to melt enough, so I think I can add the onions and garlic now. It says for them to be browned, and oddly enough, this recipe did not seem to lie about the time. It says 15 minutes, which seems more realistic than every other recipe in the world that says, oh, caramelize the onions in five minutes, which apparently is not possible. So, rubber, rubber, rubber. Uh, I still don't know why I got this wobble. I, I don't know if it's the stove or the pot. Maybe the pot. Uh, a pot looks a bit small to fry and don't want to crowd the pan and pot boil over. Uh, see, that's kind of what I was thinking. But the only reason I was thinking not was because I'm only using one plantain as opposed to several. And, I, you know, I know it said that, that uh, otherwise do it in batches. This is our plantain. I'm keeping it in here until I'm ready for it. I think I might have to do the skillet. I think I might have to bite the bullet and use the skillet. Uh, so, 15 minutes it says on on this. Uh, okay, so uh, let me spread this out. I have it on a low medium because I don't want to break the butter, etc., etc. Um, but I'm gonna have to let this sit without me without me fussing with it for a while. Um, so I'm gonna have to keep an eye on the time because uh, I can get going on the next uh, dish. Get started on parts of it anyway. Mm -mm -mm, um, yes. So, who, uh, I don't want to turn my back on this. So I'm going to do this here. Hector, thank you for the like. I think. You know what? I, I, I need room for this. Uh, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to turn my back on this. I have it on low medium. I hope that'll be okay. Uh, keep my eye, keep my eye. Okay, so uh, while that does that thing, sorry for the wobble, I'm gonna quickly try to get started on the next part, which is starting with a medium bowl. 
I'm gonna use this bowl. I'm gonna start making the batter. Star Wars theme song, you're humming. Cliffy, did I hear you cuss? I'm telling your mother, lol. Ha ha ha, did I? If I did, I don't, I didn't, I did it without even realizing it. What you do? I said I cursed. Oh. Would never. Heavens to Betsy. Uh, baby, 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 one egg. Here we go. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. No shell, yay! I, you know, I could have cracked it right into that one. So I just boil the boil bowl for another reason. Okay, let me whip up that egg. Whoa. Okay, whisk, or. Uh, so this is our egg, which I'm beating into submission. Then we're going to add to this, uh, get yourself a Presto Grandpappy electric deep fryer, cheap and good. I have a deep fryer. Uh, my mom gave it to me. I've used it a couple times. It's good. Uh, the whole using the oil and reusing the oil and how often to and having to drain it or not, or replace it and recycle it, and whatever is a source of stress. Um, uh, when I first started using it, I just used the oil again uh, that I had a couple times, but of course with each successive use, whatever I was frying got progressively worse. So, um, so I, I try not to. Uh, screenshot. Here, lentils. Okay, thank you. Trying. Okay. Uh, for, uh, so we've got our egg. And where did I put? Here. Uh, to add our egg, we are using uh, half a cup of flour to our egg. This is making our batter for our plantains. I need pictures, pictures, pictures. Call the food paparazzi. Okay. Alrighty. Flour in. I should have taken the fork out first. Uh. I've got seven more minutes back there on the onions. Got the picture. Anne Marie, thank you. Uh, okay. Running back to check the onions. Okay. Now we're going to add two tablespoons of buttermilk. At the confession, the date on the buttermilk is just a couple days ago. But I don't want to buy a whole other thing of buttermilk just for this. And there isn't much, and I know that the whole date thing is, you know, fungible. So, so that. Because I use, I made, uh, I used buttermilk and I made that amazing, 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 uh, it don't, well, um, I'll answer your question in a second, Yolanda. Uh, basil cheese, uh, basil cornbread that wasn't from, from any country, but I did make it as a bonus dish uh, when I was cooking um, Sao Tome and Principe. So if you want to go back and find it in there, it is like, the, it, the recipe is so good, I've made, I made the bread, I think a total of six times. That's how good it is. But uh, I made it twice in one week and I used the buttermilk. Uh, have I done desserts before? Uh, sort of, not on purpose kind of accidentally. I mean, how do you accidentally make dessert, right? I mean, there was one dish, which was for Iraq, which was the oldest recipe on the planet, literally. The oldest recipe ever in the history of the world.
the uh, it was a dish that was discovered on ancient papyrus in ancient Mesopotamia it involved exactly two ingredients um, pistachios and dates which were ground together and molded into a ball and coated with uh, sort of ground pistachios and when I had it I went oh crap it's a dessert didn't dawn upon me uh, Danny hey Danny 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 how you doing good seeing you uh, okay so we've had our buttermilk and we have allegedly five more minutes over there but I don't want that to get too brown uh, so hopefully I'll have time to do the brown sugar which we're about to add to this Okay, brown sugar. I'm using my brown sugar like never before uh, this week. Two tablespoons of brown sugar. Now the batter, I'm making more, I'm making batter enough for uh, all uh, what would normally be like three plantains, even though I'm actually only using one. So I'm making more batter than I actually need, but that's, Okay. Love to drink buttermilk. Really? I didn't, I don't know a lot of people could say that. It's a cardiovascular delight. I like the valve closer, ma'am. Okay, through two tablespoons of brown sugar. Oh, right hand, left hand, camera time. How to get this going. Okay, one, going for two, hit me with two, two brown sugar tablespoons, booga booga, okay, now in you go, and I have to be on time because if I screw up the onions, I will be hurting in a big bad way. Gotta go back and check the onions. Have to go catch you later. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you so much. Hi, Min887. Thank you for the light. Okay, these are starting to burn almost. Some of these are burning. That's not good. I'm taking that off the heat for a second. Okay. I have one, two thing, more things to add to this batter here. Ugh, brown sugar instantly got hard. Nuts. Where's my fork? Smashy, smashy. Better, 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 eh, hey, better, 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 eh, hey, better, better, better. Okay, we'll be back for a minute. Uh, buttermilk is low fat. The butter fat is taken out to make better. Oh, okay, good to know. All right, so where are we here? Um, back to our world o onions, where our onions, uh, some of them have gotten more than golden. And I had it on low heat, too. Shh. Um... So I have it like on a rather low heat now. Uh, so back to this, uh, we're gonna add in three cups of chicken stock. So let's see, hopefully there's three cups worth in here. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Glug, 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 glug. I will take the picture for the third cut. Okay, cup number three, coming right up. So I guess this doesn't make it vegan because of the chicken stock. I guess you would use vegetable stock if you were trying to be vegan. Okay, yeah, there we go. So I'll be right back with y'all.
Okay, so now we're gonna add the lentils. Oh, I'll be back with your questions in a moment. Lentils in, and oh, some stuck to the bowl. Why did you do that? Do not stick to the bowl. I need you all. Um, lentils, after the lentils. What the bloody hell? Oh, uh, curry powder and turmeric. So our curry powder here, and our turmeric here. And that we're gonna simmer for 20 to 25 minutes. Now, to your questions. Uh, Danny, da -da -da. oh, okay, so I didn't miss anything. Alrighty, so, Simmer 20-25 minutes, and then, um, then we'll be good. Uh, okay, so hopefully this is going to get to a boil so it can simmer. So give me a second there for that. Okay, um, it didn't say anything about covering it, so I'm gonna let it simmer uncovered. I hope that's okay. <coughs> mm, I missed something. Nope, I definitely not miss anything. Okay, uh, okay. So, um, right now I'm gonna take the roti that I have in the refrigerator and I'm gonna preheat the oven to clear off. Do you think if I just have it in the oven at 200, it'll be okay? Or should it be lower than that? These are roti that we made on Friday. So these are gonna wind up going uh, alongside these. So we've got our roti here. I'm gonna heat up I'm not sure. Uh, I'm turning the heat down to simmer on this. Uh, I'm gonna heat up two of them. Save the other one for first Tuesday, or maybe lunch for me. And, uh, I'll just drop these on a baking pan and stick them in the, in the oven until dinner. Hopefully that'll be okay. So, while that simmers for another uh, 10, uh, no, 25, 20. So yeah, another 15, 20 minutes. What's in the pot? This is the dal lentil stew, which is gonna be served with the roti, which you just saw me stick in the uh, oven, which uh, we made the roti fresh on Friday um, had some of it, this is left over, so that's gonna be served with that. Now I'm gonna go back to working on my uh, plantains in the fried plantains and spicy peanut sauce, uh, but first I have to finish making the uh, batter for the peanut sauce. This is gonna simmer, so <laughs> come back over this way. Okay, back to the batter. Back to the batter at hand, right there. So 
Give you some more juice on this die. And uh, so it says here to our batter, we're gonna add a generous pinch of salt. So a generous pinch it shall be. You're a little cockeyed. Anyone, anyone ever tell you that? Okay, generous pinch of salt. I call that a generous pinch. Okay. I wish I was ambidextrous. Okay. Alrighty. Generous pinch of salt. In you go. This is going to be the batter for the plantains. It's going to coat the plantains. I need to add water to it, uh, but not too much because it can't be runny. If it's runny, it won't stick to the plantains. So that's important. So where are we? Uh, b -b -b some water. Some water. How much is some? We'll use this. Some water. Don't want it to be runny. I think that's right on the edge of runniness. Just like a white winged dove, sing songs just like it's singing. Who, baby, who sits on the edge of runniness? Okay, uh, Bob, the green guy. What makes you green? Thank you for the like. So this is our batter, batter, batter for our plantains. These are cumins. Cumin seeds. Uh, they've been sitting here. I need to make 100% sure. You know what? Something really odd. I don't see where it said to add the cumin seeds uh, to the lentils. So I should check that because I hope I didn't miss it. Poo! They should have gone in earlier. Well, they're gonna go in now. Oopsie doopsie. Be right back. Hate it when that happens. I should have gone in with the onions and garlic. So that's going to affect things. They should have been sauteed. I know now I think I could have sauteed them separately, but I don't have the time. Okay, so we have our batter for the plantain. So now it's time to deal with our plantain. This recipe makes calls for a number of plantains. Uh, Specifically, drum roll please, uh, four very ripe plantains. We have one kind of ripe plantain. So that's different, uh, but I'm not expecting a lot of uh, leftovers here. There's just enough for the two of us. So here we have our, our plantain. As you can see, it looks like a banana, but it's bigger, right? Just for comparison, for the uninitiated, banana plantain. Notice they're bigger and thicker. And they'll you'll see them green in the markets uh, if you have a Latin, Latin or uh, African population in your area, uh, your markets should have plantains. Um, this is South Florida, we live on plantains. Um, this is ripe, just like a banana is ripe, it's yellow with spots. Um, this recipe calls for them to be overripe, which, like black, like you want to throw it out black. Uh, this isn't. That really affects, makes quite the difference. Because a ripe plantain, an uh, overripe plantain is black and soft and sweet and a green plantain is starchy, um, like a potato. And in between, it's in between. So to uh, peel the plantain, you want to cut the ends off, thusly. Gosh. And using a knife, 
score along the ridges of the plantain. I really hope this is ripe enough for this procedure. And then you can peel it. Then also it kind of looks like an unripe banana or like a, like a ripe banana. It does not taste like a ripe banana. plantain. Now that my hands are all nice and messy, I need to wash them again. Okay, so for this, we need to slice the plantain in a particular way. And the particular way is uh, that they are to be sliced in, uh, let me make sure I've got the right page here. Uh, yes, we got you. Uh, three inches long, diagonally three inches long and one third of an inch thick. You know me and um, yeah, yeah. three inches long and a third of an inch thick. Wow. Three inches is like that. A third of an inch is like that. Diagonally? Crikey. I'm not going to do that. A third of an inch, three inches long. Okay. I have no, I've never sliced a plantain in this particular fashion ever before. Just so you know. Weird. I feel it would be better with a mandolin or something. Okay. Long and skinny. Slippery beast. You know what? If I had a brain in my head, I bet I. No, I was expecting someone to be telling me right now. Use paper towel! Hold on to it, the paper towel won't slip. You're letting me down, people. Okay. Paper towel so it won't slip. Hopefully. Okay. I can't believe that's actually working. Okay, those last two weren't exactly it, but that's as close as it's gonna get. So, yay me. That needs to be documented. Okay. So now we have our plantain slices, which are not quite chips. God, I screw it. Use my hands. They're not exactly uniform, but they're close. So wash hands again. Are you simmering? Simma, 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 danna. Simma, danna. Okay. Okay, we have seven, twenty. I have another six minutes over there on the lentils. So meanwhile, we have these. Uh, so I'm going to set this aside for a moment because I don't want to drop them in the batter just yet. So now I'm going to make the peanut sauce. Uh, this is the same peanut sauce that we made on Tuesday, on uh, Friday rather, except uh, this time I'm not going to forget an ingredient. It's all going to go right into here. So let's go start off with our ginger. So that 
that I need to peel ginger. So here I'm looking for a tablespoon of ginger. Sima Samadana. Sima Samadana. Who's this artist? Donna Summer? What's her name look like in the phone book? Summer Donna? Yeah, Summer Donna! Okay, I say that's a tablespoon. Okay, garbage, peel. Peel, ginger, go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Has anyone ever been to Suriname? Closest I've ever gotten was Trinidad. I was in Trinidad, which is off the coast of Venezuela, but that's as close as I've gotten, geographically speaking. I've been to Brazil, but, you know, like Rio, that's way, 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 way far away from Suriname. So, uh, it's always so exciting peeling ginger. Uh, at least I'm getting use out of this damn ginger before it all goes bad. Come on. Speaking of bad ginger, what's Tina Louise up to these days anyway? Uh. Okay. I'm gonna wash my hands with ginger peel. What is the name of a stripper? Uh, or a drag queen, but a better stripper name. Okay, so we're going for a tablespoon of uh, ginger. I, there was a drag queen I knew named Ginger. Uh, what was her name? Miss Ginger. Yeah. Who? Ginger Snaps? No, not Ginger Snaps, although there was a Ginger Snaps, I'm sure. Oh, Miss Ginger. Yeah. Not a good scene. Okay. Uh, okay, so dicing, dicing, dicing the ginger. So, like I said, this is night two of three of Suriname. Night three will be on Tuesday, and uh, we're gonna be doing a. a it, it, Suriname food has been really surprisingly interesting for its multi ethnic flavor and origins coming from all over creation. The dish we'll be making on Tuesday um, has a Jewish origin, which is even more interesting. Um, because if you have been with us all along, you know that in um, when we cook Sao Tome and Principe, um, the one of the dishes that uh, one of the stories that came up as part of that really tra sad and tragic story was uh, how. Um, back during sort of like the Spanish Inquisition time, uh, Jews in uh, Spain fled to Portugal and in Portland they said, hey, give us asylum. And the Portuguese said, yeah, sure. And then they said, you know what? You guys owe some taxes. And they stuck them in a boat and sent them to Sao Tome. Uh, and then they died for the most part. Um, on the flip side, some went and landed in Suriname. And in Suriname, they wound up being uh, running the plantations uh, to which the indentured servants from uh, Java in Indonesia, present-day Indonesia, and uh, North, northern India, the Hindustani, uh, came into work. So the dish that we're making on Tuesday has that origin from uh, the Jews in Portugal 
that kind of worked its way into being almost the, the, the uh, primary dish of Suriname. Uh, or a stripping drag queen. Exactly. Well, that's what Miss Ginger was. It was not a good scene. You live in Florida, you can grow your own ginger, an attractive plant. Uh, honey stirring pot. Oh, he did? Good to know. Um, thank you, honey. The, uh... Yes, uh, there's there's key part in that in your sentence there. You could grow. I can grow. I have a well documented black thumb. It's not even a brown thumb; it's a black thumb. If I if I look at a plant, it dies. I've told this story before, so I won't bore everyone again. But trust me, it would die. <sighs> I mean, we bought, I, I wanted to grow my own peri peri peppers. I got the peppers, seeds, and go in the plant, and then two seconds later, bugs ate it, and then, and then something, and then it died, and then I got tomato plant, and that died, and everything I, everything I touch, I look at dies, so I can't. One could, I couldn't. Meanwhile, ginger, going into here, I wasted another bowl. Um... And we're gonna add the peanut butter to this. We have whoopsie doopsie. Stop. Collaborate and listen. Uh, we need to stop here and go back to that. So jumping back to our lentil stew. Uh, let me make a mark of where I am so I don't lose track. Okay. So we're gonna go back to our pot of lentil stew and we're bringing a friend with us. That. It said add more liquid if necessary. Uh, I don't know if it's necessary. Am I missing something? Yes. Um, oh, the camera. Ugh. So here's where we're going to add the mango. Don't get any pets then, Lol. Well, we have a cat. The cat, the cat can tell me when he's hungry, though. Plants, not so much. Plants just sit there and die silently. My mother get, went away for a couple months and left me her orchids to take care of. I, ret I returned to her three large sticks. Um, so we're adding the mangoes. Uh, and we're stirring again. Uh, it looks like it's, you know, okay on the water level. I don't want to make it runny. Um, I, too, many, too often I make stews and they're all way runny, so uh, I'd rather it be thicker. And these mangoes will give off water also, so have to be aware of that. So that's going to have to simmer for another 15 minutes or so. So uh, Santos, thank you for liking the restream. Kaka, 610, thank you for the like. Santos, how you doing? How are, how, is things, how are things in the Boogie Down Bronx? Okay, so while that simmers, uh, we are going to go back to our peanut, spicy peanut sauce. Then drop it. And I'll give you some more juice so you don't die. Okay, we're going back to add the peanut butter to the ginger, and I need the camera once more. Camera, and since, let me clean this off. It says one third, one third a cup of peanut butter. I'm just gonna eyeball that. Everything is good, good to know, good to hear. Good to hear, my good man. So one third a cup of peanut butter. I eyeballed it last time. I can eyeball it again. I don't know if I should take pictures again. Hate when I add ingredients and change liquid level. Yeah. Um, so much to keep track of you know, in your head. About with the flavors and what have you. So one third a cup, eh? One third of a cup. I'm gonna say that's about that much. 
I really don't know if I should be taking pictures of this since I did it just the other day. I mean, there are already enough pictures on the blog as it is. Uh, anywho, um, I'm going to add three tablespoons of water to this. Uh, let me add it through this. We're going to need to buy more peanut butter. We're going through it like nobody's business. Okay. Where are, here we go. Tablespoons, three tablespoons of water. One. A two. Three. Three tablespoons of water. And two tablespoons of soy sauce. Uh, as I mentioned on Friday, uh, this calls for soy sauce, generally speaking. However, since this is the sort of Javanese, Indonesian, uh, influenced portion of our dish, what seems to be more authentic on that front would be to use this particular soy sauce, which is unique to Indonesian cooking, or Dutch cooking, which is Indonesian inspired. It's called Kekap Mantis, I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, Kekap Manis, a sweet soy sauce. It's very, very thick. It's thick and syrupy, as you can see there. Uh, so, that's what we're going to use. And we're going to use how much of it? Uh, two tablespoons of it. So, uh, here we go into you. I'm not taking pictures here. I took pictures of this on Friday. Only I forgot to add an ingredient on Friday. Thick and sticky. What a mess. Okay. Don't. Okay. So our soy sauce and the ginger, obviously, uh, that's already in there. And more brown sugar. All crazy for brown sugar tonight. How you doing? Stranger, how you been? Long time no see. How's life on the open road? Have you seen any self-driving cars? And if so, have you seen people reacting to them? Inquiring minds want to know. Uh, half a teaspoon of brown sugar. I need to clean off this thing because it's all sticky and gooey, even though I'm not using it for this. See, myself, I'm waiting for the self-driving Winnebago. I can finally take that, like, round-the-country road trip and see everybody, and I won't have to worry about driving. I can just sit in the back and just, you know, wake me when we get there. That's why I ask about the self-driving car thing. Meanwhile, uh, one half teaspoon of the brown sugar uh, that's you. Okay. Half teaspoon, brown sugar, in you go. And I gotta put this back in box. Do you think someday I'll get to the bottom of this bag of brown sugar? Because I thought that the way brown sugar works is you buy a big box, you use the first thing that you need, and then the second time you need it, it's hard like a rock, and you throw it away. And then you buy another box. That's how I thought brown sugar worked. Until I found little clay bears that you stick in there and it makes everything all soft. Saved my life. Yes, I know you can also use a piece of apple or I think a piece of bread, but I like my little brown bear. This is coming along quite nicely. We'll deal with you later. Meanwhile, over here, red pepper flakes. Going with how much 
a quarter teaspoon of the red pepper flakes. Quarter teaspoon of the red pepper flakes. Here. And the ingredient that I forgot on Sunday, uh, fr on Friday, today's Sunday. Um, up next. Which is the juice of two, kind of two limes. Stay. Um, so I got two limes. And I forgot to buy lavender fam chi. How you doing? Thank you for liking the restream. We are doing the food of Suriname. And uh, right now we're working on our peanut, spicy peanut sauce, which we actually did also on Friday, uh, which was served with the uh, mixed vegetable salad. However, this time I'm remembering to add the limes, which I forgot last time. So, one, Two. Okay, Limer hugs, hugs, hugs to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I served this on Friday, it was very thick. Uh, it was good, but I'm sure, you know, the lime is exactly what it needed, and I had foolishly forgotten to add it. I didn't taste the heat on Friday either. Did you put red pepper flakes? Yeah, I put the red pepper flakes and didn't, yeah, didn't sense that. I did. Because when you weren't looking, I added extra cayenne to mine. You heard that, right? We like it spicy. We've, I've, I've, I've made him, we both turned into spicy loving people. We did not start out being spicy loving people. I tell you, that dish from Bhutan, Read the blog, everything's at clickyland.com. Um, that dish from Bhutan changed my DNA. It was like so scary. I said, how am I possibly eat something this spicy? We ate it and now from then on I can eat any spicy food I want. And I crave spicy food. Me too. Did not happen before. I did not think a person could change in that fashion. I tell my mother she still freaks out. Uh. Okay, so now we're gonna mix up all of this goodness. It looks like a crazy disaster is what it looks like, but it tastes good. Yes, we will taste it. We're gonna have to add salt and then taste it. But let me mix it up first. See, now it's liquidy. It was very pasty before. The the lime is what makes it liquidy. Yeah, now it seems like a dressing. Now it seems like a dressing. Yeah, then it was like a goop. It was like, add the goop on top. You know, if I had a brain, I could just take the leftover one and add some lime juice to that, too. Because I still have leftover. We also have leftover of the uh, mixed... Um, Bhutan is a very small place. It is. It's a very unusual place, too. Uh, I'm on the one hand, I don't, I mean, what I know about Bhutan is that they have the World Happiness Index thing, that it's like the world, the, the world's happiest place. They, most people have a gross national product to have a happiness index. They're also very, very close. That's talking about Bhutan now. It's very, very close off to the outside world until not too long ago. And so people came in, it's still very expensive to get in. Um, but uh, tourists come in and they're like, what the hell is going on? They, um, how can I put this? Bhutan, very small place. They also, um, in speaking in terms of artwork and, you know, decorative things and, they're kind of all about the penis. There's giant penises everywhere. And kind of really so much so that people go like, what the hell is this? 
so it's very odd. They also eat a lot of yak meat and yak dairy. But apparently a lot of people leave um, and go elsewhere and work elsewhere, which is odd. Probably not a lot of opportunities. So we're adding salt and now we're going to taste it. Bhutan's got a really interesting flag with a dragon on the flag. Ooh, I can smell this. Okay. Let me get a spoon I can taste with. Not this one. Okay, here it goes. Is that masala? No. This is um, a peanut dressing, a spicy peanut sauce, which is going to be served with the fried plantain. Um, uh, so, no, no, not masala. We did use masala uh, in the dressing for the curry chicken on Friday. Cheers. Oh my god. Oh, that's so crazy good. It's got the ginger, very Asian, the lime, and the peanut butter. That is so good. This is what it was supposed to be like. It was good before, now it's... I was, oh my God, I want to swim in this. It's got a kick. Mmm, score. Justin, my good man. They're called Lingus. Mm hmm, there you go. Kenneth knows his stuff. Justin, hey, how you doing? Uh, this is our peanut, oh, spicy peanut dressing. It's peanut sauce which I'm going to live in. Um, I'm going to put this in the fridge right now. Okay, so now comes the sort of mo other moment of truth. Let me clear some stuff out of the way here. Okay. Because now it's a part on Sprockets Then Be Dance. Okay, now I'll clean you up. No, I need to clean this up now. Can't deal with seeing my knives dirty. Okay, you go away. Clean you off. I can't believe we're doing okay on time. For once. Who wrote? Who wrote? Jester Gal, I've missed you too. How have you been? What am I cooking? We're doing three things. Sharon! Um the uh, oh, we're making a fried plantain and spicy peanut sauce. That's what I'm doing right now. Back there we have our uh, dal, our lentil stew, our dal lentil stew, uh, which is uh, a bubble in a way behind me. And might need to add more water. That's going to be served with the roti, which is in the oven. I need to make sure how that's going. Okay, it's warm, I'm turning the oven down. Uh, okay. Okay, here comes the other part. Here comes the boom. Was it supposed to taste this? No. This is our batter. Uh, okay, we got our plantains and they're gonna go into our batter to coat them. There's a temple in Southern India which is been in continuous use since the pyramids were built. Yes, it's crazy. Plantains are da bomb. They are da bomb. And these are supposedly riper than that, but they're ripe. They could be riper. Um, so plantains in the batter. Okay, here goes. Uh, 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 we gotta figure out how to coat these. Uh, maybe with a spoon. The spoon would be handy. Okay. Coat. We want to get the batter all over the plantains so it'll stick. I wish I could get good plantains. Oh, you can't get your plantains in Wyoming? Well, I can imagine that would be difficult. No, but the weird thing about plantains is that, you know, they're green. So they're picked green, and then they're shipped to wherever in which time they ripen. So, uh, it's, 
Could you mail order plantains? You're all about the mail order. Would that work for you? Because that's not like a, you know, not like a, like tomatoes that are, you know, picked green and chili and shipped over here and turn red artificially and then they taste like crap and people wonder why. It's not like that. Okay, I'm trying to get them to be coated and I know if I did it separately, uh, In Wyoming, steak and potatoes and Taco John's. Mmm, yes. Hmm, <laughs> I just got a message about something unrelated. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. These are plantains in, in batter. Now we're gonna try, 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 try to get. Okay, this is how many I have. And I need to get two inches of, okay, I need to add more liquid. Okay, I really need to add more liquid to the doll. It's evaporating. It's starting to stick. Hold on, here, this is what's happening. I don't want it runny, but I don't want it to burn onto the pot either. Uh, which is starting to do. Don't do that. Do not do that. Do not burn. Won't let you. You may not. You're not allowed. Okay. A little more just in case. Okay, turning it down more. Okay, meanwhile, back over here. I don't want to crowd the pot, you're right. I'm gonna go with the skillet, even though it means using up a lot of oil. I could use the deep fryer, but I don't want it. I've only, I've only used it for baking potatoes and I don't want the batter in there and stuff, so. Good save, yeah. Oh, on that, yes, thank you. You're a good cook, thank you. That's very nice of you to say. Um, oil, canola, oil. Uh, I know I have more somewhere. Is it in front of my face? I know I have oil. I mean, I know I have another one of oil, let's put it that way. Are you hiding? Are you being shy? Don't be a shy little oil. Okay. Two inches. That's like the whole stinking pot. I'm not using that much. Uh, I don't want to waste too much oil. I don't think I need that much. I think that should be that should be okay. Uh, ooh, the good stuff is scraped off the bottom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I just don't want it like you know destroyed. So, because it's a little longer. We're a little teensy bit later than I expected. Uh, okay, so I want to get my oil to. 350. Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, uh, two inches deep. Well, that's not two inches deep. This is my uh, thermometer. 350. Holy moly. Oil heats up. Don't get. Don't get crazy. Don't get crazy, Mr. Clifford. Here. There. Oh, meanwhile, um, 
we've got our lentil stew, which is gonna go. Uh, I've got this to keep it from splattering all over my face. Who is the trumpet player? Good question, Angel Portico. I'm gonna go look up poster. It is from Suriname. It's the Suriname Music Ensemble. The Suriname Music Ensemble with to Tobo Tobo. So that's what that is. It's uh, off of Apple Music, so um, you can find it. Check it out yourself. Wait, do you get what? Two, three months free? That has provided all our music for uh, for the challenge uh, for the past few months, which has been good. Okay, not heating up fast enough. Faster! Okay, I'm gonna need a plate with paper towels onto which these will all be drained once they are ready. This is quite good. It's funny, I'm finding, you're welcome. Um, I'm finding that a lot, a lot of countries, their um, ethnic music, uh, you know, I mean, countries vary widely, but sometimes I'm finding some countries, some even unlikely countries, especially in the Caribbean. Um, jazz. Uh, a flick of water and the oil splashes. Yes, it says the flick of the batter if it turns brown instantly. Um, that's when I'll know also. But, you know, I had him buy this uh, a few weeks ago. But, he, but uh, my timing on when he'd be home with it and when I needed it was bad. So I thought maybe we'd wind up returning it, but mm -mm. so I uh, didn't have to do that. Now I'm using it. Just needs to get hotter, faster. Hotter, hotter, faster, faster. Okay. Now I need to get me some water before I die. Because I'm still dehydrated from my giganto run. 13.25 miles, woohoo! Although it says my longest run is 14 miles, though I really can't remember spe specifically running 14 miles. I did a half marathon, which I'm doing another one. Oh, that reminds me, hun. Yes. Can we figure out if I'm doing that or not? We'll figure it out later. Okay. But doing a half marathon in April. A dark side, Star Wars themed Disney marathon. It's gonna be fun. Is that better, better? Uh, uh, it, it better be better. It better be better, be, better, better with plantains. Um, Cliffy is thinking that to take these out of here and put them onto there. That's what these are for. Uh, I'm feeling that they're not really sticking to the batter as they should, the batter. Uh, but I'll put them in one at a time. And supposedly, uh, they are in for how long? Uh, three to four minutes. Uh, so for that, are you turning uh, for a full marathon? Not a full marathon. Um, at, while, you know, uh, not too long ago, the idea of running 13 miles would seem like bonkers to me. Um, now, I felt like, you know, with the right weather conditions, um, I felt, eh, no. It was like falling off a log. But the idea of a full marathon, the idea of that entire thing that I did being the halfway point strikes me as unhuman. But then again, that's what I thought about this. So who knows? I, d I don't think I ever would do a full marathon. But, you know, the people I know that run full marathons are like, oh, come on, you run, you know, 10, 11 miles on the regular. You know, you could do a full, half, a full marathon easy. And I'm thinking, nah, the way I do things, because I haven't trained the way any, like, actual person would actually train for such a thing. In fact, in a way, I've kind of broken all the rules. Like after the fact, people say, oh, you shouldn't do it like that. I'm like, well, I'm doing it and I'm okay. I'm not hurting.
Maybe I've screwed up along the way. I hurt myself a lot early. But the fact that I hurt myself early was good because now I know not to do the things that hurt me. 350 is hot. Also takes a while. Uh, I walked in a, I walked in one marathon. I walked one of my, Oh wow, really? That's a heck of a walk. You know, I have some friends uh, who they do this thing every year. It's for charity where they walk the perimeter of Manhattan. And uh, not being from there, I don't have like a real clear idea as to, you know, how long that is. And I know walking, uh, like I could run, I could probably run that, but I don't think I could walk it. Uh, because walking shorter distances just hurts, but running I can do, which is weird. I know. But they're, yeah, they're always in pain and stuff and taking pictures, but that would be really cool to walk all the way around Manhattan with a bunch of people. Okay, we're at 250, 250, 250, big money, big money. I'm turning it up to high. See, see if it gets there any faster, because now it's getting late. Somebody said something. Mom, I see you, Mom, hi. So, uh, we're waiting on our plantains, we've got our doll, we've got, uh, I might as well get my plates ready while we wait for the oil to heat up. Here I thought I was on time, and now not so much. But uh, hopefully this will get to the temperature we want to soon. Yeah, saying show tunes last eight months. Oh, that sounds like fun. Where was I? Where was I for that? Okay, almost, 375. Come on, come on, you can do it. 375, 375, do I hear 380, 380, 380, 380, do I hear 385? Big money, big money. Okay. Our doll is sitting here simmering and trying not to stick to the bottom. Uh, I don't know, you know what, um... We're almost there. 310. Uh, the doll stew. Uh, I don't know what it's served on. Uh, I mean, physically speaking. Hey, Diana, welcome back. Uh, the doll stew in some kind of bowl thing. Hmm. <laughs> I don't have a low bowl that could sit on top of the plates. So I think it's just gonna have to sit on the plates. Which, you know, it is what it is. 350, we're close enough. Okay, I've turned it down. Okay, here we go, one, two, three, go. One, plantain, here we go. Don't, don't die on me, don't plant. Okay, yay. Plantain, one, two, don't stick together. Don't stick together. Don't stick together. Yeah, I know. Don't crowd the pan. Don't crowd the pan. It's always the thing that I... I'm saying right as I'm crowding the pan, going, no, I'm in a hurry. I don't have time for a second batch. There's only so much left. It's like the thing that, the, the one of the two biggest mistakes chefs make. Not tasting their food, crowding the pan, not salting enough. Ah, it's too hot. How do I make it less hot? I take it off the heat. Ah, my face. The oil will cool down once you drop in the plantains, down to 360. Uh, it got way up to 400. So um, it's down to 375. So I, I moved it off the heat. Of course, my face is burning. 
Okay, 375, dropping down to three, 350, almost to 350, 350, okay. I'm gonna try to flip, thank you Hector by the way, you are the eternal lifesaver. So this uh, dish here is done? That's done, yes. I don't know how I'm gonna flip it, but they're they're in the liquid, so I don't think I have to flip them since they're in the liquid. Am I right? It said four minutes. They seem crispy brown, but I'm gonna give it the full four minutes. Thank you again. Uh, well, well, since the four minutes, I'm gonna take out the doll out of the fridge. Oh, you can get to see my my birthday present. Uh. The husband gave me for my for my birthday. See, oven mitt, world, Africa, South America, Canada, Greenland. Hey, eh. the appropriate the appropriate the appropriate oven mitt, but it has to be seen this way. Okay. Ah, so we've got our roti that we took out of the fridge, an uh, oven, not fridge. Uh, looks like two big cookies. Looks like two big cookies. Uh, this is gonna get chopped into uh, four pieces. Uh, I don't want to wait too long on that. These are all that very hot. I just had it at 170. Awesome! Awesome sauce! Four, five, six, seven. I think these are ready. Okay. Out to go. On to paper towels. Oh shoot, I didn't take a picture, did I? Mm hmm. Okay. I need to have the peanut sauce ready. See, this is why I didn't use the deep fryer, because I don't want all this gook in the deep fryer for the next time I want to fry potatoes. So I only am frying potatoes in that oil to make french fries. No batter, no, no nothing battered. Um, that's what, that's that's the way uh, my I'm I'm operating. A little uh, I can tell it got a little too hot, a little brown, but we'll be okay. We'll be okay. Ah, see now it's made now it's kind of made everyone go dark. When the when your phone gets too hot. It dims the screen. So, over here, oh no, over here. I'm gonna quickly slice our roti into four pieces. Eins, zwei, drei, vier. You know this week Dutch in Suriname. Dutch and a Creole Dutch-like language, which is the lingua franca, the language that everyone kind of gets. But all the recipes in Suriname websites were all in Dutch. And I wasn't gonna ask all my Dutch friends to like translate for me. So we've got uh, this, so let's move, move on out to the other side, move on. One, two, three, four. Uh, oh, you're not seeing what I'm doing, are you? Get over there so you can see. Okay. One, two. We'll do one, two, three, four, like you. One, two, three, four. Uh, peanut sauce. 
It's gonna be served in little ramekins. I have another spare one over here. Get a spoon. Shenanigans, there's something I'm missing. Something I'm forgetting. The doll. I need to taste the doll and, uh, and season it. But first, let me do this. Okay. One, two, three. This sauce is so freaking good, it's scary. Okay, plantains. So there's not gonna be room on the plate. Okay, this will be served on the side. Plantains here. Okay, and lastly, over here, we need to season our doll. See how we're doing. Salt and spoon, spoon, spoon. Do I have a spoon over there somewhere? Spoon there. Doll. Doll, not Arlene. No one's old enough to remember that. Very good. Good thing I tasted. Because it desperately needs salt. And pepper. Okay, we'll be ready to serve in two seconds here. Okay. Hey, Betsy! Betsy, Betsy! Thank you for the restream. Very good. Still a little short on the salt. One more time. Hello, 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 hello. Now that's some good. We have a winner. Okay. Scoop. Stew. Let me get the spatula out of the way. Normally, this I saw this served in in bowls, uh, but we try to have things in one plate. So there you have it. The lentil stew with the mangoes, in case you're wondering what the chunks are, and you missed it earlier. So, let me get my camera out and I'll let you get a look. Clear out all my, my stuff here. Okay. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Rock the boat, don't rock the boat, baby. Don't tilt the boat over. There we go. 
So we have night two of three, night two of the Seychelles. This is our, uh, our dal lentil stew, uh, served with the roti, the uh, flatbread, and our uh, battered uh, fried plantains, served with our unbelievably delicious spicy peanut sauce, which is crazy out of this world good. So check that out. Everything will be on the blog on Wednesday at cliffyland.com. You can uh, see pictures of everything, links to the original recipes, uh, these videos right here, kind of how everything went, and, uh, and also kind of how it tasted and information about the countries. Uh, so check that out on Wednesday. You can follow at Facebook. Look for Cliffy Land, the Global Cooking Challenge. Follow on Twitter uh, at Cliffy Land. You can also find us on Pinterest and on Instagram. And go to our YouTube channel. You can subscribe on YouTube. That would be super great. Love you forever. Um, night three of three will be on Tuesday. That will be the last night for 2015. So check out night three on Tuesday of Suriname. We're going to be making a palm. So that's going to be really fun. It's going to be very long. So, uh, have a good night. Catch you later. Till then, gotta eat. Bye.